So, Savion, yeah, welcome to Never Broke Again, where we talk about how people will never have to worry about fun, money, bills, problems. Well, maybe problems. You know, rich people problems, though. You know, we all got problems, but I'd rather have rich problems than poor problems. So we want to come on, hear about what you've been doing, tell us a little bit about your story, and uh, share with our audience how you're never going to be broke again. Let's do it. So that's a great, that's actually a great question. And shout out Josh and Andrew for having me on. Like we met a couple of weeks ago in sunny seaside, Florida. It was amazing. Um, yeah, Josh, like you were saying, man, uh, I think in order to be rich financially, you have to be rich mentally first, right? And at the moment, I'm much more rich mentally than I am financially, but I know with my vision, with my plans, with my goals, with my work ethic, my personality, my charisma, and my want to, my will, my fight, I will definitely be a top dog in the financial side here pretty soon. Um, I'm, I'm a motivational speaker. That's how we all met, right? We all have a like a passion to like talk in front of people, lead people, um, host things. And uh, I'm a life coach. And all this is self-made. Um, somebody asked the other day, how do you get certified to be like a life coach? And I was like, they have all these certificates and all these classes and stuff. But for me, it's more getting in the field, doing the dirty work, learning what I struggle with and then what I'm good at. Then I'm going out and like applying it. And then as I go along, right, kind of like just, just not really fake it till you make it, but more of like, just trial and error as I go along, then I'll then I'll start to spend money and get better. But I'm not spending a lot of money on something that I'm bad at at first. And then I don't know, that just messes with my mind, you know. So yeah, life coach, motivational speaker, uh, I own a fitness business. And what what I do is I train a lot of athletes, right? Kids, college players, pro players. I teach them how to move better, right? Well, it's, I really don't teach them anything. I I uh I help them develop stronger mindsets, which allows them to to play without thinking, right? To know that adversity challenges and all this stuff is coming during games, practices, and uh, more so life. And I just teach them how to just stay on track, not really get caught up in the bad stuff that happens because it's always coming. And um, I'm an author, right? Self-made. Like literally just finished my book out this morning. Stayed up all night. <laughs> At a nice. cafe, uh, uh, like a diner here in Stephenville. Finished the book. Um, man, there's so much other stuff I want to do, but I just, my biggest thing is just trying to slow everything down and just, I don't know, just keep the main thing the main thing. But Josh, hmm. I'm I'm sorry. Where, where did this all start, Fabian? Because I have like so many avenues and so many opportunities and. And they're all created by good energy, good work ethic. Um, we, hey, hey, bring the mic closer. Bring the mic closer so we can hear both of you, Josh. Josh, you too. Are you able to turn your volume up so we can hear you guys? Can you move the mic? So the mic is just here for props. It's not even hooked up. <laughs> but, so so that, that's perfect. That, that's, that, that's Savion to a T, right? Yeah. He's, he's hustling. <laughs> Savion's hustling, right? And, and you know that—that's what we love about you. Your energy, your hustle—that's what we do. We we we're, we test things out, multiple multiple things, and then something's gonna hit, right? Something, one of those things is gonna hit, and then we're gonna take that further. We're gonna take that one inch and then push it a mile. So you're, you're testing about out a bunch of avenues: the book, the the motivational speaking, the the training. And one of them's gonna, you're gonna get inches here, inches, but one of them's gonna shoot up. And it, has any of them shot up for you yet? And that, that's what attracted so us to you. Have it. just a high level of energy, your workout, if, but, you know, nuts. That's that's interesting in itself. What what has has anything taken it further than a couple inches here for so you? Far, honestly, bro, recently since we left that uh, that getaway in Seaside, literally, yeah. bro, I started like a like an online IG interview thing. And that's, man, that's really taking off, man. I'm going to interview Kim Kardashian's trainer here pretty soon. I, oh, no, nice. He, he's the LA Lakers head and strength conditioning coach. He trains The Rock. 
Angelina Jolie is Gunnar Peterson. He trains Rob Kardashian. But yeah. I met him at a luncheon a week after we left that uh, that getaway. And like I, just being in the right room, right, with the right people, knowing how to talk to people, it's opened up many doors. But yeah, Andrew, that's what's taking off, man. That that IG live interview. And I'm yeah. on the social media platform. Build build the network. Yeah, for sure. Connect, you know, networks determine your net worth. And uh get getting that I you know. Finding getting in those rooms like that conference we met at that event is just getting ideas, right? And then executing on those ideas. Still, these mics, we gotta. I got, I, I can I hear you guys, Josh? Do I hear you guys? Can you guys hear me clear? Yeah, we can hear you. I, yeah, hear, you I hear you. All right, because the, the level is, I, I don't know how, how, all right. So, so basically, like, you know, I, I know when we talk to you, you're, you're, I mean, you're willing to do whatever it takes, get like, you know, sell a, bring five bucks here to the soccer field, 10 bucks or wherever it is for the kids. And you, you'll pitch the kids, the parents come on out and, and build that up. So, so what, yeah. So for example, what is, I mean, why won't you ever go broke? I know why you're not going to go broke again. Right. I, I, at least I, I think you won't, right. but like what, what, what do you think is um, you know, energy levels and your willingness, right. To do, to do what's necessary. But uh, so what, what are your, what has worked for you? What has been, what have you found success in? Honestly, Andrew, and the reason why we all connected too, I think it's just, um, no, I don't think, I know it's uh, right. The energy, the, uh, the way that I actually do care about people, you know, like it's never fake. Like it's all authenticity, right? Like I want to know everybody's story, which obviously we won't ever live to know everybody's story, but it's cool to know as many stories as you can, you know? So just being able to connect with people, like no matter how rich, poor, mentally strong, mentally weak they are, like just being able to connect is why I would never go broke again. But just knowing different crowds, right? Like growing up in poverty, right? But no, but being around like my rich friends or my successful friends and just just so many different groups I've like uh, hung out with and just been around, bro. I think just me literally being able to connect with any person on this planet is why I'll never go broke again. So you have like no fear, no fear factor. I feel like zero. So, right. When we, when we spend time together, you have zero, you know, people, and I can identify that on people. That's what in, interests me, inspires me to locate my no fear factor, right? The, I don't give a fuck attitude to an extent, no, no fear limit. Where, where do you think you got that from? Was that just like, just in you or do, do you just, what, what do you, what do you tell yourself or what what do you how, how does that work for you josh that's i mean andrew sorry andrew that's a great question but nobody has I, nobody asked me that question ever in my life but so now you got me thinking yeah but honestly I, it came from mm, just reaching the lowest point like that depression phase and knowing like nobody's going to come save you and nobody really cares about a sad story you know like nobody really cares like, who cares? Like, we all have problems, right? Like, deal with it, get over it, and just be better. And if you got it, like, I don't ever think I embarrass myself, but if you if you put yourself out there with confidence and energy, the world, it will, it will reward you, you know? And that's all it's done. But honestly, bro, I think it's just something I was born with. I can't say my mom. I can't say a coach. I can't say a teacher, bro. Literally just, I thank God every day. It's like, it's just that it factor you're born with, like, and I'm, bro, y'all see me, bro, just blessed to be able to play all these multiple different sports, blessed to be able to talk a few languages, blessed to just be just multi, multi-balanced, multi-versatile, a, a quick learner. I hate bragging about myself like this, but it's it's all that. Uh, Andrew is just literally, bro, like, it's just something inside of me telling me, you're going to die one day, you might as well be happy, you might as well meet as many people, you might as well make something happen while you can. Yeah. What was, what was going on during those low points, Savion? Was it just like your mindset? Was it just like dealing with a bunch of things? So we didn't even talk about that when we were there, y'all, but it was more so like I played sports all my life, and that's what I identified with, right? So when it was over with, I never really had a plan. I didn't have a plan to be a nothing. Like I just thought I was going to play sports my whole life, right? When counselors, teachers said, hey, you need a plan B, I was like, plan B is literally going to the NFL and taking my family out of poverty. Like, there's nothing, you know, so. So how far did you take sports, though? Say it again? How far did you take sports? So I played college football here in Stephenville. 
So Tarleton State, they were Division Two at the time. Now they're Division One. But I played all the way to college, and uh, I tried out for the NFL. And it's funny you asked that earlier, Andrew. That don't give a fuck attitude. Like literally, bro. Uh, I didn't have an agent. I didn't have a trainer. I couldn't afford it. So I was literally waking up like at four or five a.m. running by myself, like coaching myself, doing weights myself, like. And I went to the pro day, the NFL pro day in front of like the Chargers, Cowboys, all these scouts. And I did the best and I didn't hire anybody. But I really wanted to go pro out of college. It didn't work out. And honestly, bro, bros, <laughs> I thank God that it didn't work out because I wasn't ready. I, I right. wasn't I wasn't financially smart. I wasn't like good at time management. Well, what what happened at those tryouts? So you, 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 you came from a D2 school. That's a small school. You wanted to make the jump. What happened at those pro days literally bro like it's hard like you said d2 is smaller like i interviewed yeah. my friend yesterday he played for the cowboys jets and all that he came from the same school but you have to just be like so different and so like big or so fast or so rare that they even look at you they come here just i think it's more so just to kind of find a diamond in the rough but it's so rare bro so kind of going in you kind of knew i don't have a chance but at the same time you're like man maybe i'll get lucky or you know what i'm saying so once that once I never got a call back, that's when depression started. 2016, just like I'm applying for jobs, y'all. I don't want to work there. I'm hoping nobody calls back. You know, <laughs> it forced me to go back and get my master's because you know everybody wants to stay in school forever. So I go back to Tarleton to get my master's. Fast forward to graduation, I drop into that depression again because I literally don't know what I want to do in my life. You know, and just not. Just I'm telling y'all, identity, like struggling with identity is why I didn't want to live anymore. That was that that was that depression. And that was that was in 2016, you said? 2016 was when I tried out for the NFL. I just graduated my undergrad, December 2015. So the spring of 2016, yeah, that was the first wave of the depression. Right, Andrew? Then the second wave came in 2018 after I got my master's. It's weird because every time I got something like what Americans think is a major accomplishment. I was more depressed when I got it, you know? And like <laughs> the stuff they give me paid now, y'all, you can't even teach in school. Can't even teach it. How did you pull yourself out from the depression? Just sheer willpower? So uh Josh, literally bro, I was in my mom's like bathroom in her two bedroom apartment. It's all in the book. Hey, my book is a hey, pretty oh, but my book What's it called? There, y'all. Um it was a, I had a knife in my hand, right? I'm looking in the mirror, crying, eyes blushed, I read, I've never, I've never been as low in my life. So I'm literally saying like horrible things, like, man, like it doesn't matter if I'm here, it doesn't matter if I'm gone, like, like what am I doing? This is dumb, like just mad at myself, ready to take myself out. And like I keep telling y'all, I believe in a higher source, I believe in God. God stopped me that day and literally walking around a park at six in the morning, with a pulled calf muscle from a previous soccer game the night before, I was looking at the sky with my fist still ball for three hours walking around the park, asking, why am I here? Got to be there. Three hours passed. This higher source placed it in my heart, my mind, that you need to start your own thing and see what would happen. Ever since that day, y'all, that was July 27, 2018, when I was about to kill myself. Three days later, July 2018, Monday, in Garland, Texas, at Hawford Park, I trained four people. That's twenty dollars total. Four people, twenty dollars total. That's four hours total. But anyways, that was the most exciting day, first day of work I ever had. They're like, "This dude is crazy," and they're right. I am <laughs> right. So, um, I was at the park. I was no. I was getting to know them. I can still tell you. I told you about connection. I can still tell y'all how many sisters each one of them had. What's their names? What if they had kids? What's their goals? Like, uh, man, it was just that was it. That's it, man. I just, I don't know if I pulled myself out of it or if I just snapped out of it, but I think we all have a sad story. You can either use it, you can play the victim role and just want to kill yourself, or you can use it as motivation. And that's that's what motivates me every day, knowing that I don't want to get back to that point. That's interesting because you, fa- you found yourself, right? You hit that's a it. bottom, you hit a bottom, and you were like, I- I'm, I'm super vulnerable, exposed, and I, I got to just do, I got to just put myself out there. Basically, I can't, I don't want to work for somebody. This didn't work out. I just got to put myself out there, go to the park, train some kids. And that, that's been ongoing, right? That's, that's yes, been, About three now, now you have a, 
So what 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 came from that? What what snowballed after that? So what happened was these are all great questions, man. Hey, this is a great interview. Appreciate y'all. But what happened was I started in Garland July 30th, 2018, right? This is the hottest summer in Texas in U.S. history, or one of them. How hot? Remember, How hot is hot? 110? Yeah, yeah, literally, bro. Like 110, 109, like hot, hot. And Texas hot is different from like a Vegas hot or Nevada. But anyways, I would, uh, Andrew and Josh, I would wake up at 3.45 in the morning or, or earlier, and I would train from about 5 a.m. to like 10 a.m., right, because it gets hot. So that's five hours, and I probably make, $25 total, maybe in this span. And now I go back to my mom's house because I didn't have a house at the time. Go back to her house, take a nap, eat the whole nine, come back in the afternoon from about 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. So you got like 11 hours in a day that I'm working, right? That I'm grinding. Sometimes nobody even shows up. And you probably get like $50, $60 a day, maybe if you get lucky, you know? So it's like, that's kind of how it started and I kept doing that and, and it just kept growing. Like I said, it was only five dollars a session, but what people would start doing was paying like monthly fees, right? So they'll pay me oh one five five times a week for four weeks. Well that's a hundred dollars, right? If I get enough people, I can live off that. So <laughs> I was out there grinding man, just I made business cards, like I had them made. And I started all this y'all with no I had I had not not to say I had no money, I actually had negative money. I had negative four hundred and fifty nine dollars in my bank account when I started my brand, my business, right? And what happened was I came back to my college town every weekend to do like some free freelance work where I interviewed the head coach after football games. And a lady came up to me because she saw me on Facebook playing soccer. She said, hey, can you train my son? I saw your video. I said, heck yeah. So this this town I'm in, y'all, is two hours from my hometown in Dallas, right? It's two hours away. So I would come every weekend. I would train this kid and I would do the coach's show then I would leave. One weekend I trained him and I recorded him and I put it on Facebook. Out here, it's a small town. They're always looking for something new. When I posted him, it spread it like a wildfire. Like literally, there's nobody like me here. That's why that's why I've been so successful here. So from his post, I probably picked up about 20 to 40 clients in the span of a month, right? Fast. And these Damn. people want to pay me by the month, literally. So me and my wife at the time, I was like, we might as well just move back there. Like it's like prime position. Like you like to coach the little kids out there. I could make so much money out there. Let's move back. Literally move back. In uh, May of 2019, I've been here ever since, and literally it's made me that that video of that kid Austin Harden at the park training him soccer. It's made me so much money, man. Like like in three years, and these not even these not even great numbers. I actually added it, kind of estimated it the other day, but. In three years, I'm pure vision, hustle, heart, no gym. Outside, rain, sleet, snow, I made $160,000 or more in three years. And that's not even counting the nonprofit stuff. I raised like $24,000. I've donated all this, but that's $160,000 in three years. Well, yeah. And I'll, well, really, in Stephenville, less than three years because I got here in 2019. So it paid me two and a half years, $160,000. And that's unheard of, man. Like, literally, that's all heart, hustle. Grind. Yeah, um, that's man, and that's better than any job I've ever wanted, ever thought about. And now I'm just finally tapping into the motivational speaking side. These are streams of income I, I wasn't even thinking about. Like, I wrote in my vision on my notebook, and I can show y'all. Like, I literally have it. But in 2018, I said, I, I am more than an entrepreneur. I'm a philanthropist, a pioneer, an icon. And this is no news to Josh and Andrew. I was telling them this all last weekend, two weeks ago, but. Uh, I will speak in front of big crowds for no less than five thousand dollars for forty-five minutes. That's where, that's where I'm going, and I know I'm going because I just—it's that confidence, right? It's like when you know. Some people are delusional, but but when you know, you know, and the big dogs—they know it because they're replying to me every day on social media. Inky Johnson, Eric Thomas, even Michael Burt now. Like actually, Michael Burt, y'all, the guy we were with for the viewers that don't know him. He's actually going to write the forward message in my book. Nice. This is, this is networking. It's just being yourself and just asking and seeing if you receive it. But literally, Andrew, that's how it happened, bro. Literally, that's how that I think moving back to Stephenville is what made me successful. And they, they taught me how to be a celebrity because they treat me like a B-list celebrity. Out here, <laughs> literally, like it's an all white, like 99 percent white people. And like not only am I black, but I like 
my presence is loud, so everybody knows who I am when I walk in places, you know. So they literally, hey, can we take a picture? Literally, bro. Where is Stevensville in Texas? Like, what part of Texas is that in? That's kind of uh, southwest. Uh, not really down south, bro. It's honestly, it's north Texas. So think of think of Dallas, Fort Worth, all that. It's only like an hour southwest of Fort Worth, so it's really not far from the metroplex at all. Like, if you flew to Dallas, you'll get there in like ten minutes. No kidding. Did you name your book? I did. So it's S Dub the Real Meaning. Uh, and let can, me can I you. can I attempt to rename it? Oh no, <laughs> no. You can do the next one, bro. This one, that one. That Lo- one local one. star power. <laughs> bro, you y'all are amazing, man. I just want y'all to know that. That's a pretty good title, right? Say it one more time. You said I'm, no. local star power. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, I might. That's what, nice. what is the book about, Savion? Is it about your life? Is it motivational? Yep. So mainly it's about reaching that low point at 24, I was 23, 23, 24 at the time, and just how I climbed out of it and how all my past traumas growing up uh, helped me get out of it. So, no, Josh, I don't like that's what I was thinking the other day. I was like, it's not an autobiography because it's not me breaking down every little thing. It's more like just a motivational thing of how to get from a dark place to a, a, a light place, you know, like a happy place. But I can't wait for y'all to read it, bro. Y'all, y'all gonna cry, laugh, uh, be mad, right? It's, it's a lot of good stuff. And I read it last night again. I, every time I read it, not to blow myself up or anything, I'm like, who taught you how to write like that, man? You're, 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 you're amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if, if you believe in the words, then it's always good. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the truth. Because even I think I'm a terrible writer and I started reading my own work and I'm like, dang, this is actually pretty dark. I mean, I think it is, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, this is, this is deep. This is good. This is real. Mm-hmm. It's real. That's what people, and that's what real. people want. They want real. So as long as it's not surface level and it's real, then it's going to be good. You just got to get the word out there. And uh, I'm sure all the, uh, whoever your training is going to be interested in it. Absolutely. For sure, and uh, and 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 go from there. But I, I still like the title "Local Star Power" because I think that's how this is uh, triggering you, and then pushing you out into a, a bigger regional or national stage. And you're you keep reaching up, is what it sounds like, and that that's the key to to getting pulled up. These other people are going to pull you up. Connecting with uh, who was who it, Eric Thomas, and who was the other person you mentioned? Inky Johnson. Inky Johnson. Yeah, he's a big motivational speaker too. Yeah, just yeah, just being around them, watching them, learning them. See, I mean, I, I don't know their fear factor, their fear lid, you know. But uh, I know you don't have one. But no, uh, you know me, Andrew. Look, yeah. Michael Burke. Yeah, if he called me and said I'm going on stage for no money, I'll steal the show and literally just by being myself, like just saying my message the way I know how. Literally, people can connect with you when you're not like robotic, monotone, like boring. I'll just keep it like, this is what happened. This is what how it made me feel. This is how I'll never feel again. When you mix a good story with confidence, bro, you'll never be broke again. Yeah. Well, well, well I also think exercise, you'll never be broke again. Exactly. So what is exactly. like, what you, did you work out this morning? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not yet, bro. I didn't sleep last night because I, I had to finish that book. It was a priority because I'm flying out to Denver Saturday. But Okay. I did. I, I did sleep. So whenever this interview is over, bro, I'm gonna go crash, and I'm gonna wake up with sushi, and I'm gonna work out right after that. What do you uh, workouts? Uh, I know you do some big time workouts. You 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 ran 13 miles that one day. Are you still <laughs> yeah. doing that every other day? Or no? So <laughs> I do like to run, bro, a lot. I like the high intensity training with no weights. You know, you see, yeah. I saw me jumping all over the restaurants. Yeah. You know, like, I like playing basketball. I like playing. Honestly, I really like playing soccer. That's my favorite. But anyways, I just I really not a fan of like the weight training just because like I've seen what it's done to people and I know how it made me feel right out of college. Like like it like as we get older, the heavier you try to go, it's gonna tear your ligaments up. It don't matter if you're I I, I like your perspective on that. I think you need to run with that. I I'm I think you. you need to take that further. Don't don't diminish that. That that can be your concept. I agree, bro. I've thought about the no weight right. training is huge. Just just use your own body weight, you know. That's it. Like the caveman yeah. did it before we got here, bro. Like literally, the only thing they were lifting was like logs, rocks, stones, and stuff. But 
other than that, they didn't have no weights and they didn't have no fancy all this stuff. It's just they ran away from the animals <laughs> and they chased right. the animals. Like I love that kind of life, uh, uh, that kind of that kind of workout. Just by yourself, just give me, bro. Literally, give me an outside area, and now give me forty minutes, thirty minutes, and I'll burn probably eight hundred, nine hundred calories and just. Be, and you can also. I was telling the guy this the other day, in the bar. Yeah, I go to the bar. I don't drink. I just drink this the whole time I'm at the bar because I know mentally mentally ill people are at the bar and they want to pay me money for my <laughs> what I have. So I just go there for that. But I told the guy at the bar because he's like. Yeah, man, I'm about 45. I, I lift and I squat this much. I was like, I would never do that. He was like, man, how'd you get that big? I was like, well, I used to play football, but that was six years ago. I do not. I've never touched a weight in six years. I probably touched a few dumbbells, but no squat, no bench. He was like, man, you think I can look like you if I did that? I was like, if you eat right, if you stop drinking the beer that he had in his hand, and if you just follow what I tell you, you probably could look better than me. And I guess that didn't work because I haven't heard from him yet. <laughs> Probably didn't remember the conversation. Hey, hey, you got to implement the follow up, right? You got to go back. Yeah, that's, that's you got to go back seven to fifteen times, okay? <laughs> so, and also, what I what I do if I'm in a bar or wherever, I'll put a splash of cran in the water because I don't drink either. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like a drink. <laughs> a little chameleon. Heck yeah. So how did y'all start this podcast? I want to know that. Like, what made y'all start it? What, what? We had another one with a different concept around it, and it, we thought it was just too narrow, and we wanted a broader concept. So, you know, Josh is a financial advisor. That's his, you know, that's his, uh, that's his expertise. And I've built a, a couple, too, uh, working on third and fourth businesses now to uh, – build uh, streams of income. I'll never go broke again because I've built, I built up a, a level of expertise. So, so deep in knowledge and skills that uh, uh, the, the people come to me, right? They, they come to me. So kind of like uh, they come to you with the workouts and right. uh, training, like, I, you know, your energy levels off the charts and your, your enthusiasm. So that, that's, that's what I, you know, that's where I would go to you for if you were lo local, but, yeah. uh, um, but people will, you know, we, the skill set I learned in finance is, uh, uh, unless they get rid of the mortgage industry, uh, I'll never be broke. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then we're adding on, we're adding on, uh, you know, it's also, it's also sales based to an extent. Uh, so once you learn how to build a business, you can, you can duplicate it in another aspect. And, uh, that's what we've been doing with the advisory side. And now we're adding on solar and you tweak things a little here and there, but, uh, once you, once you see, okay, it can be done. And, and like, uh, the advisory portion, you can see the long-term benefits there. It's less, it's more uh, relationship than transaction. Mortgages is more transaction. Advisory is okay. It's a long-term, um, long-term aspect to it. Uh, not necessarily turnkey overnight. Uh, job yeah, I mean, more into that one. I mean, there's but, people I don't hear from for like two or three years, and they all of a sudden just call me. Right. Yeah, but the other ones are are a bit more. Okay. Yeah, it's a pop. It's like, all right, here's a five thousand dollar deal, ten thousand dollar deal. Boom, it turns. Where financial advisory, it's it's smaller, and it's it's there's the income is more quarterly, unless we're uh, we're doing coaching, which is something that we do offer, but we're, we're, we're reinvesting a lot heavily into the business right now. So, but once you can, once we can, I can figure out the sales structure of an organization. It's easy to figure out how it works. Just don't, you know, don't, uh, don't go into the red basically, right. <laughs> you know, stay out of the red and, uh, sales cure all. Right. And that applies to sports. Just, you know, you got to sell, you got to sell more than you spend, you know, you draw a line on how much you're going to spend. And you, you started, you know, you got to remember you started from nothing, right? We start, I started with nothing. Like we literally, we felt compelled to go into an area 
where uh, you could have worked at a country club or something like that or, or somewhere else. We felt compelled to do something on our own. We hit a bottom and we were forced to put ourselves out there uh, and and do it. And uh, and then it grew from there. So, so that's, that's what, that's what I did. I, I think that's what Josh did. And, uh, and it's almost, well, I had a good job and I left. What's that? I had a good job and I left it. Yeah. It's like, it's prey drive, right? It's prey drive. It's primitive. It's, it's okay. I must do this. I must go here. And if you can get savvy with credit, you can figure out how to you know, unfortunately get yourself in debt, which is what yep. is not necessarily a good thing. If you're too smart, you can, uh, you can put yourself in the hole and, uh, you can leave yourself in a jam for a while. Um, so being less intelligent can be beneficial, but, uh, you know, cause if you, you just get credit cards and you run them up, that's not a, mm -hmm. that's not a good thing. Uh, and, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we, we do that. We have to backtrack and be like, all right, you know, we got to curb the spending. But, uh, um, I mean, you know, that, that's kind of where, where it came from for us. So I don't know, Josh, what do you, what do you think? Where, what, what compelled you to, to work on the podcast? Yeah. Leaving corporate America for Josh. You know, yeah, that was, so that was in corporate America. Had to be in corporate, uh, I mean, by the time I was 25, I had a, House five blocks from the beach, man. Making like thirty grand a quarter just in bonuses. However, after doing that for a couple of years, I was like, you know, this isn't really that much, and I'm a slave to the job. I have no freedom. I have no autonomy to think and do creative things. So that's when I decided to leave because I was like, this isn't worth it. I don't care how how much you're paying. Yeah, you, you, yours is yeah. You were making a lot of money. You were making good money there, and you just left. That, that's yeah. That's that's a risk. We spoke with um, Alex Voss. He's a magician, and uh, he he did something similar. But uh, um, yeah, that uh, never never go broke again. So how does never, never how does Davion again. become bigger than Eric Thomas? I I think he can. I think he's I, got yeah. the energy. I, I believe he will. Star. I believe he will. I will. Yeah, yeah. He I, will. I, I, I will. can. I will. I must. I will. I can. I must. And that's what he says. And Andrew and Josh, I wrote that down. I preach it every day. Like, I will be the number one person that can get somebody out of that hole, or I will die trying. Like, that's my life goal right now. Do it. I'm actually not even chasing the motivational speakers. I'm chasing Martin Luther King. <laughs> it's like it's bigger than you know. Like I'm trying to. Like motivational speakers, they're known as just I don't know. Like, I think like Tony Robbins has a hundred, hundreds of millions of dollars, like four hundred million plus. I'm pretty sure. And I know Eric Thomas doesn't have that much yet, but me, I don't. I, I assume Martin Luther King didn't have many, many millions, but I'm trying to do a mix of both, right? I'm trying to change the world the way I know how through voice, through action, through sports, through media, through all this stuff, while also been the richest person to ever walk this planet in a different way. Like, I'm not going to create a car. I'm not going to create a website. I will create an app and all that, but I'm trying to get as many humans as I can to connect with what I, I created, and that will make me the number one motivational, the number one philanthropist, the number one, y'all. Yeah. And I say this, and I and I want to sound crazy, because if I don't sound crazy, I'm not saying it right. <laughs> Look, I'll be the, the, bit, the best philanthropist the best motivational person and I will be the richest person if I'm if I'm alive for long enough to do it. That's 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 what I'm after every single day. And I, I can be homeless while I'm doing it. I can have no wife. I can have no kids. Like I'm going after that to change my family's legacy. And they're gonna know that wow, that Savion kid, my uncle, my cousin, my nephew, my son, my brother, he was he he tried it. And for that, the people that's not in my family yet, that's not born. They'll, they'll try it too if I'm not successful, but it's highly unlikely that I'll be unsuccessful. Yeah, I'm I'm here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, your energy is great. I, I, you know, I think the smart people will see it. 
I think <laughs> smart people are seeing it, right? Y'all are smart and, as fuck. Y'all, yeah, y'all, yeah. Y'all, y'all you know, I there. Let's do something. Right. And I'll be, I'm ready, man. So, so you know, you just got to keep keep moving along. Uh, we saw you as, a, as like, all right, this guy is going to the moon, right? So, so I, I, I stick with people. Sometimes it takes them five years. Sometimes it takes them 10 years. Sometimes they just move along and, it, it you know, but – I'll grab people early on and I'll be like, I gotta, I gotta hang on to that guy. He's going to break, he's going to break loose. He's going to, he's going to go to the moon. It, whether, whether how many years down the road, hopefully sooner, but whatever it is, I just know. And I that's, agree. that's what I saw on you. That, that's what I see. And, and I think you're going to get there. Uh, and, and you'll find, you'll find that whatever it's going to, whatever that, that vehicle is to take you, to to that uh but uh y- yeah I, I, I you'll get there i already i already know it too. It's a matter of like, man. Telling me he was like man all you got to do honestly all you got to do which i'm about to do it andrew like literally in the next couple of weeks because i've i've met them it's like just find find somebody that's a pro athlete find somebody that's like just at the top of their their craft and just talk to them or like get them to follow you or like get them to show up and That'll be the breakthrough. And literally, I'm about to interview Gunnar Peterson that trained freaking Jennifer Lopez, Angelina Jolie, The Rock. All these people follow him right now. You think not one of them, maybe one of them are going to watch the IG Live when we go live? Kendall Jenner, uh, Kylie Jenner, he's trained the whole family. Like, literally, like, (laughs) The Rock? Come on, man. Yeah. I cannot wait for that. I can't sleep at night knowing that I'm going to interview him November 21st. Nice. And and that'll be live. We got to watch that. Yep. 2 p.m. on a Sunday. Dang, Josh said, peace. Josh, where'd you go? <laughs> He's broke again. There he is. Josh is broken. He's back. Josh is broke again. He got kicked <laughs> off the pod. There he is. Techni- technology. <laughs> I should have worn my 369 hat, man. Yeah, where is it? It's at my house. I was telling Josh I'm at Leduc's Where are you? Where are you right now? At Leduc's house. They're out of town. But uh, a mansion, oh, but a mansion, bro. And I'm just, I'm over here like Odell Beckham was at Drake House. I'm literally writing my book, doing my podcast. I'm, they got the pool, they got the essential waters. They got about a thousand of these things. Bro. <laughs> nice house sitting. Yes, literally. They got, they got a housekeeper here cleaning up. They got the dude upstairs doing construction. That's why I never be broke again because I'm around the right people, you know. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. Andrew, you froze. Now he's having technological. <laughs> I'm never moving to Florida, man. <laughs> difficult. Yeah, how come? Florida's great. It's because the Wi-Fi, look, he's stuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, it happens. <laughs> well, Savion, thanks for coming on, man. Man, that was Look forward to doing some stuff. And got, what, what do you got going on? Tell me a little bit about what you got going on. So you, see, you built that relationship. December 4th, well, I'm start, we started December 4th, so December 3rd, the book releases. Uh, December 4th, Stephen LaDuke, he's a dentist here in town. He's also an uh, uh, aspiring motivational speaker, life coach, the whole nine. He's writing a book as well. Um, me and him, we're doing an event December 4th, and Josh and Andrew was kind of were, were kind of helping us with ideas or what to name it. We're kind of in the health and wellness space, just how the mind has to be right for your wellness to be right and stuff like that, so. December 4th here in Stephenville, Texas, we're hosting our first ever like mastermind. And what we'll do is invite 30 people to come out and sit with us 9 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll invite 40 people to watch virtually and then five VIP packages that will include like life coaching and stuff like that after after the event is over. But we're actually going to release the tickets and all that today. And we're so but the most thing I'm excited about next year, Josh, is January 8th in my hometown. Uh, we're starting a, a tour titled Fatherless to Free. And it's a lot of speakers just talking about how they didn't grow up without a dad and how if they had a dad, he was never really there, like not present around mm-hmm. them. So me, I didn't know my dad till 23. So being able to, to give a message in my hometown is a dream come true. And that's January 8th. And I, and I can't wait for that day either, bro. So just a lot of good stuff coming up. Well, that's Savion. Savion, send me all the info. I got gonna, you. You know, we'll we'll offer, send me all the info because we want to come out and support any way we can. Yes, so, sir. Thanks for taking the time, bro. And we'll see you soon. Doing big things. Have a good one, brother. All right. Bye, Savion.